Next up, we have Art Center College of Design with Transactor, a UX for AI. Hi, everyone. I'm Lee. I'm Shay. I'm Xing. We're from Art Center College of Design, and we're presenting Transactor a UX for AI. Current conversational interface imitate humans. But why? Computer have its own strengths and weakness. It have its own um, way of processing the decision making. And it literally speaks a different language. Computer needs its own unique identity. And we believe this new identity will help the user better understand how their computer works, and the computer devices will be also able to perform a more customized task, a more productive search, and also a more collaborative uh, interactions. But to have a better collaborations, we need a Creole, a lingua franca. What we're proposing here is a designed language for AI-based computational actors, like, com like com conversational interface. This new language mediates communication between human and computational actors, and also it improves human to computation relationship. And in this way, we can talk with, uh, like something, we talk with someone from different country, just like when I talk with Lee, I always use my body language and instead of speaking, speaking English. So we are arguing that developing user experience from transparency will help to create this new computational identity. What, what we mean by transparency is that users should be able to understand what the computer is doing and why. In this way, conversations can become more nuanced and meaningful. So, to create this new transparent language, we looked at creating a conversational interface that communicates emotions uh, by producing a working CUI. We then looked at how that interface might respond non-verbally by building a chatbot that only responds with GIFs, and then looking at what a natively computational form might look like through a series of form studies. Uh, so based on our research, we then developed four individual working prototypes that use light, sound, motion, and behavior to communicate non-verbally. Essentially, we transformed the current notion of a CUI as a, a disembodied voice in a black box and transformed it into a set of embodied uh, networked objects. These objects communicate with the user through distinct non-verbal uh, <laughs> distinct nonverbal modalities. This facilitates the conversation and helps the user understand how the machine is operating. So we isolated each of these nonverbal methods of communication into its own module to better understand how it works. The light module shows how the computer is listening to the user. It uses the color and brightness of the LEDs to give a general impression of how the computer is receiving the input. This is analogous of how we use facial expressions in our communication. The audio module reveals next computer's actions. We've used tones to indicate that the that the computer is currently thinking and to communicate some of the details of the task it is about to start. This is model after filler words like hmm, huh, and wow. So all these words indicate how the, uh, uh, indicates the speaker has more to say. The motion module indicates the status of the text that the computer is currently working on. Um, it functions as postures and gestures doing human-to-human -human communications, revealing the response to current task. 
and the behavior module. Um, it shows the general status of the computer. Just like uh, we can tell if someone's stressed or tired by their behavior or the bag under their eyes, the user can tell how taxed the computer is by the speed of the fan cooling the CPU. So we think that this sort of communication system can best be applied to a, a higher level sort of ideation process. We have an example here of a script writer using this system to help figure out some of the details of a scene. I want like a bright color with an appropriate symbolic meaning. Can you give me some suggestions? Green. Really? Why green? Color symbolism databases, 80% green for ominous scene, related results, death, decay, non-human monsters. Yeah, but I just don't like green for this. What about some color that symbolizes poison in nature? Like poisonous frogs, or snakes, or something like that. Yellow and black patterns. Mm, no, I think I want something really evil. Can you give me some evil qualities? Crime, immorality, corruption, control, harm. Um, okay. Can we check these against the color symbolism databases? Red. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, I think that works. So, our hope is that these four modules, light, sound, motion, and behavior, can augment the standard voice output of current CUIs uh, with nonverbal subjective indicators. These add an element of native computational behavior that more closely resembles our experiences talking with other people. We explore user experience for artificial intelligence to create distinctly computational identity, which will help users to better understand and converse with their computational agents. And we choose this form to move away from human-centric, but toward a native computational appearance. Additionally, we want to emphasize the physical interactions between user and computers, so the two are able to um, trust each other, uh, learning each other habits, and grow a close relationship. This system aims to communicate through multiple channels and with redundancies. Its transparent user experience design helps the user understand how the system operates, which changes their behavior. This then allows the system to understand them. Uh, with this altered behavior, the system affords more in-depth interactions, which helps produce a more collaborative relationship. So this work has raised a few questions. From these prototypes, we found that knowing more about what the computer is doing and how it works, it makes the computer strangely more personable. So can we relate more to computers by making them less like us? And with uh, more conversational interactions, how do we differentiate demands and conversation? And what is and what can be the relationship between machines and human? With every computational device having its own identity, what sort of characteristics emerge as native qualities or behaviors? Do these change per device? Uh, will the brand affect its behaviors? Can the user change its, uh, its characteristics? We hope this project is an interesting provocation that leads to uh, further user testing, more experimentation. We hope ultimately that it changes how we think about artificially intelligent and conversational systems. Thank you. Thank you. Um, provocative work as I always expect from OutCenter, um, and thoughtful, and um, I love this idea that there are 
you know, artificial intelligence is exactly that. It isn't human intelligence. It's it's very different, and the many different kinds of artificial intelligence could be embodied in very different kinds of subjective inputs and outputs. Um, you've really gone on a very daring path here with this project in terms of you've you know you've taken on some really challenging sort of ideas, and I think push the conversation in a really nice way. Um, so I want to commend you for that. There's really some bold thinking here. Um, the devices themselves, totally like beguiling, you know, um, fascinating things um, that, you know, you can, you can leave you a little cold, right? I mean, in terms of their provocations about what could be ways to express the artificialness of that intelligence. Um, um, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, but they're so unintuitive that you're kind of like, you're puzzled at the same time, right? Like they're so kind of like, they so challenge the idea of human computer interaction um, that you're like, you find this very hard um, way of relating to them. Um, so anyway, I, I, I commend you for going on such a bold journey and um, I think the results are super interesting and provocative, so well done. Uh, I echo what Rob is saying. I mean, um, not, I'm, not, I'm not speaking when I say this about student work um, here, but often with student work, you find them solving problems that are not necessarily current to present design issues. And this is actually one that's absolutely current to the moment that we're in, this issue of whether or not we want these artificially intelligent things to be represented as human. Um, it's someone I know, for example, that Microsoft has thought a lot about. Um, the thing that I wonder, though, and the thing, though, I wonder about, like, what is next about this is that, like, I find a lot of these uh, details actually totally convincing, especially, like, the light is a, a way of indicating attention span and things like that. But as you move away from skeuomorphic representations, one of the challenges is that as soon as you get, get away from that, the mappings become much more complex and hard to sort of grok unless you have a code, right? So that requires this user testing to see whether or not this thing really means what you think it means with real life users. But do enough of that research, and then you end up with skeuomorphic representations, like I'm speaking faster when I'm nervous or whatever. Um, so I'm wondering if you guys thought about like what that next step is, and validating whether or not these 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 codes are actually meaningful for people. Yeah. So we based a lot of our work on we did extensive research into linguistics, uh, specifically nonverbal communication and uh, communicating emotions uh, through language. And we started off trying to communicate emotions, but the sort of computer analog. Um, and so right now what we're communicating, what it communicates is uh, how the computer is working. So like the, uh, the LED module will analyze what the user says and it'll report sentiment analysis. Uh, so we're essentially trying to create analogs from nonverbal communication in the computational realm. Hi. <laughs> I'm not sure I understood all that, but um, yes, extremely provocative and kind of crazy project, delightfully so. Uh, I mean, it also may be contradictory in some ways because our models for artificial intelligence and, you know, even the way you described it, um, they are human centric. Um, so, uh, but I, I was interested, I feel like it would have helped to, I'm sure you did this in your research, but um, it would have helped to be very specific about what are the ways that computers are really different from humans. And I wonder where that would have taken you. Um, I mean, for, for example, um, I think the, the sort of input output um, I mean, just understanding that a computer is going through, um, you know, 600,000 database records. Or, you know, just if it was transparent about what it was actually doing. I liked the goal of um, uh, sort of educating us about how, you know, what the, what the computer is doing for us and how it's serving us. And um, it was interesting in the video that you had some of that sort of data feedback layered on the objects. And so maybe, maybe that could have been part of the representation as well. Um, 
anyway, but I'm you know totally intrigued. Sort of, um, I liked the the conceptual art piece of it, but I also like you know how it's sort of um, yeah how, how it's asking it, it's it's forcing us to ask questions about AI. Um, do you <laughs> yeah? So there's. There's a guy, he, he died prematurely, but named Clifford Nass, who um, had this notion that we project human properties onto machines no matter how uh, unhuman-like they are. And so as that is going to be more strongly uh, present when things are actually starting to speak to us in a fluent voice as if they actually were human. And this notion to counter that, because what brings out is that the, all of these assumptions that they know more than they really do, and they can do what they can't. And so how do you actually limit the, the conversation so that you are constantly reminded and don't fall into that trap, which is just natural behavior, and you, so you put by design a block that constantly reminds you in a way that you can't ignore. And I think that that's how I read what you're you're doing. And if you don't know his work, read it because it'll be it'll give you lots of ammunition to go on further. But I, I think that this is a really important thing to be doing. And I think it's even in cases we have to distort the voices, even so that I know which personality has. If you if I speak to you in German, you can tell I don't speak German. So if you're a native speaker, you're going to answer me in broken German. To, to work within my vocabulary, and I have to present my limitations to you. And if I spoke to you with one key phrase that I spoke fluently, you're going to come and I'm lost. Mm -hmm. and, and because I set expectations by practicing being a smart ass, I, I actually messed up. And, and I think that's true with the machines. So I think there's something going on in the conversation here that's really important, and it's really interesting. And I really like Cliff's work, and I'm glad to see it reflected uh, one way or another in what you're doing. Thank you, Art Center.